everyone and welcome to chapter 3.3. This is Factors Affecting Enzymatic Reaction, Part 2. So, um, in the previous video, we kind of looked at how the rate of reaction can be affected by subject concentration, enzyme concentration, temperature, and pH. But we did not talk about one more factor, which is enzyme inhibitors. So yeah, we're going to talk about that today. So what are inhibitors? Inhibitors are molecules which can reduce the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Now in this syllabus, we learn that there are two places where inhibitors can bind to to reduce the rate of reaction. That is to number one, bind to the active site. Uh, this means the inhibitor would be similar to the substrate shape. And in this case, we call the inhibitor competitive inhibitor. So competitive inhibitors bind to the enzyme's active site and have similar shape to the substrate. Now the second place that we learn uh, that inhibitors can bind to is an allosteric site. Inhibitors can bind to an allosteric site of the enzyme, which is basically another site of the enzyme other than the active site, so anywhere else is called an allosteric site. And in this case, the inhibitor is called a non-competitive inhibitor. Okay, so this is a diagram here, and we can see how the competitive inhibitor, which is this one here, um, it is similar in shape with the substrate. It's not exactly the same, but similar shape. And therefore, they can both bind to the active site, which is here. And this causes uh, the inhibitor to directly block the active site, resulting in no reaction. Now, however, in non competitive inhibition, we can see that the inhibitor is not the same okay, as the substrate at all. And you can see how the inhibitor binds to a different site, which is called an allosteric site. And while it does this, while it binds to an allosteric site, it changes the active site shape, causing there to be no reaction after all. So the substrate cannot bind to the active site because the active site has changed shape. So let's dig deeper. Let's look at competitive inhibitors again. Again, competitive inhibitors can fit into the enzyme active site because it is similar in shape to the real substrate. And the reason why we call it competitive inhibitor is quite mm -hmm. obvious, if you haven't figured it out by now. It basically competes with the substrate for the active site of the enzyme. Now, however, uh, this binding, by the way, is not permanent. They bind and then they detach and then they bind and detach again. Uh, so the competition depends very much on the concentration of the inhibitor present. And this competitive inhibition is definitely reversible. Now, what do we mean by that? Okay, this is what we mean. At low substrate concentration, there is a lot more inhibitor concentration compared to substrate concentration. A lot more inhibitor than substrates, yeah? So what happens here? The enzymes would have less frequency of collisions with the substrate, therefore less enzyme-substrate complexes form, and therefore this reduces the rate of reaction and the enzyme's function is inhibited, as we know. Because why? The competitive inhibitor competes to bind to the active site of the enzyme, and the substrate cannot come in. However, it can be reversed or overcome by having more substrate. So, if you increase the substrate concentration, and the substrate concentration is much more than inhibitors, then the inhibitor would have less effect. Remember I said um, the inhibitor is not permanently bound to the active site. It does bind, it detaches, it binds again, and so on and so forth. So yeah, if you have a lot more substrates, then these substrates are more likely to bind to the enzyme active site, and therefore outcompeting the inhibitor. Okay, so more substrate 
less inhibitor means more chances of substrate molecule colliding and binding to the active sites and therefore more substrate can bind to the active site more enzyme substrate complexes can form and therefore the enzymes function is unaffected so <clears throat> this entire thing we just talked about is called competitive reversible inhibition and that makes sense because well it requires a competitive inhibitor but you know if you increase the subject concentration and the subject concentration is a lot more than just a little bit of inhibitors then it's reversible the inhibitor has less effect it's as if the inhibitor is not there anymore because its concentration its amount is so small so 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 small compared to substrates now we can see this as well in a graph and this is a graph of red okay against substrate concentration now let's look at the vmax first and you can see here for both graph with inhibitor or without inhibitor with inhibitor is the red line without inhibitor is the blue line here um, you can see that both of the vmax is the same and this is because this happens at high substrate concentration at this point the inhibitor has no effect and therefore um, you can see that they both both these lines they reach vmax and uh, this is because right the enzymes are not affected by the inhibitors right their inhibitor has no effect and the inhibitor doesn't really destroy the enzymes all the enzymes are active and therefore um, if you increase the substrate concentration till really really high right this means you know all the enzymes can function normally and reach half Vmax now let's look at KM instead now this one Vmax stays the same however you can see with the inhibitor KM increases this is with inhibitor now why is that so obviously the inhibitor reduces the rate of the reaction so you can see here a less steep increase of rate compared to the blue line with no inhibitor presence now why is this so now that's because more substrate concentration is needed to reach half vmax when an inhibitor is present so yeah um but however you can see again as you continue to increase the substrate concentration this also increases the rate of reaction and eventually the the um, reaction with the inhibitor will also reach vmax the same vmax so the takeaway point here is vmax stays the same because at high subject concentration inhibitor has no effect however km increases compared to the reaction of the inhibitor present because well more subject concentration is now needed to reach half vmax the rate of reaction is slowed down by the inhibitor okay now we are ready to talk about non-competitive inhibition so just now was competitive inhibition it was reversible okay but in non-competitive inhibition there are two types there are the irreversible kinds for example like poisons uh the one top of my head is cyanide which binds to some enzymes in mitochondria and inhibits atp synthesis so if you eat cyanide a lot of it you will die so yeah um, that comes out a lot in movies and spy shows as well right so now you know that is a in that that cyanide is an irreversible non-competitive inhibitor now however there is a reversible form of non-competitive inhibition as well and we're going to learn this in something called the end product inhibition that happens in our bodies so we'll see that in a moment now let's start with the irreversible one first now the inhibitor would bind to the allosteric site of the enzyme okay and allosteric site as i explained just now is just another site on the enzyme any other site 
other than the active side. It's deemed as an allosteric side. This changes the active side shape and uh, it does this by basically disrupting the hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic interactions within the 3D structure of the enzyme and causes distortion ripples. So even if it binds at just this point, because it breaks the hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic interactions, it would affect the structure of the enzyme and change the active site shape even if it's not binding directly to the active site. So that's what we mean by distortion ripples. Distorting one part would affect the entire structure. Now, the point here is that it changes the active site shape, active site being the key word. Substrate is therefore unable to bind the active site because the substrate in the active site will be no longer complementary. Again, a very important way. It's no longer complementary in shape, and therefore the enzyme function is inhibited. Now, increasing substrate concentration would have no effect on enzyme activity. Again, this is non collective inhibition, and this is the irreversible one. So, increasing substrate concentration has no effects, and this is a permanent binding. And therefore, the enzyme that has um, that the inhibitor has bound to will not work anymore. So it's destroyed. It's as if the enzyme isn't there at all. So we can see this illustrated in this graph right here. Again, this is the same graph as just now. Uh, sync axis, I mean, is rate against concentration of substrate, as you can see here. Let's look at the Vmax first. We can see here that Vmax has decreased. For the red line, which is the uninhibited reaction, Vmax is high. However, in the inhibited reaction, okay, this in this case, an irreversible non-competitive inhibitor, right? You can see here that the Vmax is lower. So Vmax decreases. Now, why does it decrease? Inhibition is not reversible, as we know. And as I said just now, when the inhibitor binds to the allosteric side of the enzyme and the enzyme active site changes shape, right? This is permanent. And therefore, it is as if there is less enzymes available for use. And this is exactly what's happening now. Some enzymes which are bound by the inhibitor are completely useless now. And we, it doesn't even matter that they don't even exist. Right. It, it's like they're not even there because they're not functioning. Only those functioning ones remain. And therefore, we can say that there's a lower enzyme concentration available for use. And since there's a lower concentration of enzymes to use, then it would have a lower Vmax because Vmax is again dependent on the, the concentration of enzymes available. Now, how about Km? You can see here that Km remains constant. So cool, right? And you might not believe this at first, but as you can see here on the red line, half Vmax is different from the half Vmax of the blue line. But if you draw a line down, the Km is the same. And why is that? Now, the enzymes function, the ones who are not inhibited and functioning, they function as normal, right? So their affinity is not affected. So therefore, same substrate concentration needed to reach half Vmax. Cool, right? So what's the point here? Vmax decreases because less enzymes available for use, and Km remains constant. So this is a diagram of those two inhibitors put together. So this is competitive inhibitor. As you can see, same Vmax, higher Km, which is the main point. And for the irreversible non-competitive inhibitor, you can see here, lower Vmax, but same Km. It looks confusing at first, but just remember the ones that uh, tail off, if it tails off, together at the top, 
that is for competitive. And if it has a lower VMAX, that's definitely non-competitive. So the VMAX is the most obvious thing here. KM is a calculate that number and requires you to think a little bit more. Again, look at the VMAX. Okay, so we only learned graphs for these two types. Uh, for the last type, which is end product inhibition, we do not learn a graph. So the end product inhibition is a form of reversible non-competitive inhibition. It's reversible, it's also non-competitive. We don't learn a graph for this, okay? Now, what is it and what is it for? Now, it's actually something uh, to control metabolic reactions in our bodies and it maintains homeostasis. Now, what, what happens in this inhibition? So let's, let's imagine here. Rem imagine a chain of reactions as shown here, right? So enzyme 1 catalyzes A to become B, B is converted to C by enzyme 2, C is converted to D by enzyme 3. So there's a chain of reactions here. Now, what happens if there's too much D? We don't want the body to simply waste energy or um, you know, produce too much of D. It might be a problem, right? You want to conserve resources and be wise with resources. But anyways, you take D here, and because there are too many Ds, your body actually uses it as a negative feedback, right? The end product becomes a non competitive enzyme inhibitor for upstream reactions. So D would go and inhibit enzyme 1 in a non competitive manner. And therefore, this reaction here doesn't work. Oops. This reaction here wouldn't work once uh, too much D is formed. So if this doesn't work, then there's no B and therefore no C and no D. Well, less of them. So only when there is uh, that D is being used up somewhere else, then this negative feedback will stop and this process will continue and more D will be made um, and then it continues. Over time, you know, because so many uh, product D is made, therefore um, there's excess of them and therefore it inhibits enzyme 1. So enzyme 1 doesn't work, this reaction doesn't work, no B, no C, and no D, and so on and so forth. So it's like an off-on switch. It is a negative feedback reaction in order to maintain homeostasis. So how do we put that in words? Let's look at the words here on this slide. High amount of end product. Okay, it can bind, again, it's a com non competitive inhibition. So it binds to the allosteric site on an enzyme, catalyzing the reaction in the same metabolic chain, and this inhibits the reaction. However, of course, when the amount of end product, which is the inhibitor, decreases, means used somewhere else, or used to do something else, or depletes, right, that rate of reaction will increase again because that uh, inhibitor, that product D we saw there, can lose its attachment on the allosteric site and can be used elsewhere. So this is an example of, again, a non-competitive reversible inhibition. It's only binding there temporarily, but it can detach when concentration is low and the reaction can continue. So yeah, that's it. Just a summary of what we have learned today. There are two types of inhibitors. Number one is competitive and this inhibitor would have similar shape with the substrate and bind to the active site. And this is a reversible inhibition. There's also non competitive inhibition that we learned where the inhibitor binds to the allosteric site of the enzyme. And this is, this is usually irreversible, so not reversible. But there is also a reversible form called and product inhibition, which uh, functions to make it maintain homeostasis, you know, and and um, make sure not too much product is formed in a chain of reactions in our bodies. So yeah, those are the two types of inhibitions. I hope you learned something today.
see you next video